It's Two on the Aisle with me, Charles Gross, and Leslie Hoban Blake. Tonight, reviews of The Play That Goes Wrong, Latin History for Morons, Sweat on Broadway, Come From Away, and War Paint. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Two on the Aisle. Oh, oh. And the season ends, and we are busy, busy, busy. Oh, well, it hasn't quite ended yet, but we are yes. busy, busy, busy for sure. Yes. Dolly Parton <laughs> used to say, it takes a lot of money to make me look this cheap. Uh -huh. <laughs> it takes a lot of things that must go right for the play that goes wrong. Okay. Imagine, if you will, noises off squared. <laughs> this is a troupe trying to put on a play. We don't see their background stories. We see them just putting on the play and everything. The props go wrong. The sets go wrong. The well, acting is disastrous. This play has some of the best worst acting. Right. Some well, of the best worst scenery and some of the know, best worst direction. We don't, you say you don't, we don't know their backstory. We do know a little bit okay, about them yes. as the play goes on. We learn it as things happen. To an extent. And we know that they're amateurs. Yes. And we know that they're a, a little amateur company that likes to do things. That you somehow know. accidentally ended up off on, yes. on Broadway. Yes, on Broadway. And it lit this show literally came from a very small theater company uh, that never would have expected to wind up here. But J.J. Abrams, was that the one who brought, who brought this in? Was it J no, it's, I, I'm wrong about who it was. Uh, uh, well, he actually weighs one of the producers, oh, yes. yes. Well, that's the reason that it's on Broadway. Then, right. th then that's your answer. But, well, he, he and uh, quite a few other people. Yes, um, but I think he's trying here. to be, you know, like, like Rudin and... Uh, well, he has made an excellent, Harvey excellent Harvey Weinstein. I mean, they're start. all moving into the, you know, they're moving Henry into the Lewis, Broadway Henry Lewis, Jonathan business. Sayer, and Henry Shields have written this play, and Mark Bell directed, and basically it... If no Noises Off, I guess, was the typical, supposed to be the typical British drawing room comedy right. or <laughs> this, sex farce. This, this is, is right. farce this with is a capital drawing. F. This is basically an Agatha Christie. Think Mousetrap. Right. Is certainly right. the inspiration where there's a detective. Which may and still be running in London. I'm not sure. <laughs> it ran I think forever. It is. <laughs> Don't tell anyone the detective did it. Yes, right. <sighs> um, and basically there's been a murder. A, invest, a detective comes to investigate, and you have the butler and the and all these wonderfully played characters. Uh, well, but it's not the characters that it, it, you know. It, these things have to be cartoonish. You don't really invest yourself in the yes. lives of these people. But what happens is the doors break and the windows fall, and the, and, and 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 a whole second story tips right. over. And I, we don't want to spoil it, but. You know, if anything can go wrong, it does. I, I should have thought this should have and, and there's an ele And there's an elevator. Some I don't know how, how they afforded it, how the onstage company perform, got an, uh, could afford an elevator, but, but it, it's, they've it's got there, one so in that. It, it's and there, so that. it can't work. Yes. That's why it's there. And you see the way this is printed, so it's off the page. Mm -hmm. I think instead of saying the play that goes wrong, it should have said the play that goes wrong, which would have, I would have found that more funny. Okay. More funny? Funnier. But there's you, nobody. It here. doesn't get much funnier than this. Let me tell you. Well, there's the, the part. The, the point is that there's nothing. There's nobody in this company that we know. It's the Mischief Theater from London. It was brought over intact. There are no Americans taking mm -hmm. over the parts. Um, and the play is probably better for it. Uh, we saw. Let's see. The cast that we saw: Robert Falconer, Henry Shields, Greg Tana Hills, Henry Lewis, Jonathan Sayer, well, Charlie Russell, David Byrne. Henry Lewis, Jonathan Sayer, and Henry Shields well, wrote the play. Right. No, that's and uh, Byron uh, Corrigan, right. uh, who saw it the, the, the night that we saw it. Apparently, there, uh, I think there was an understudy for the, um, for the, the, the girl, the, well, the, the woman who, who was basically one of the techs, oh, who was techie, pushed yes, into right. uh, to an onstage role, decides she likes right. it. Which causes a problem when the actress who's supposed to be playing the role decides she wants it back. Right. Now, this is directed by someone named Mark, named yes. Mark Bell. But the Amazingly people who really so. deserve credit are the designer, who's Nigel Hook. I love mm -hmm. that name. It sounds so British, <laughs> doesn't it, Nigel Hook? And the lighting person, Rick Monjoy, mm -hmm. and the sound designer. I mean, all of these things are they, they're breakaway things that have to break away. So yes. it's, it's amazing uh, that those things work so well. It, it is. Again, a lot has to go right for so much it of this to go wrong. It is slapstick and Monty right. Python and Benny Hill and all of that stuff. <laughs> it's British humor. It's it is, well, perfect it's, British humor. I, you know what? 
This is better than I've ever seen Monty Python. This is better than I've ever well, seen Benny. I wouldn't Benny. say that. Then I would. No, I wouldn't go that far. I absolutely. It's very, very good. I laughed more at this yeah. than I've ever laughed at Monty Python. David Hearn, who reminded me of a um, young new, 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 uh, new who, who am I thinking of? New Vaudeville, Bill Irwin? Bill Irwin, uh, yeah. At times, he, he has this way, you know, at times the cast will get themselves into a jam or the set, something will go wrong uh, with them, and they'll get out of it. And the audience applause. So he acknowledges it. He basically. Oh, oh that guy. Oh, yes. yes. He gets caught up in it. He right. keeps doing oh, something. And, and, and he hears the applause and he goes. Oh, and, and he comes to And the then he gets more applause. Very much like Bette Midler in Hello, Dolly. <laughs> Sort of, but yes. look, but more, but yes, more, but, but more, but more. But on so. a crazy, but on a, on, a, on an askew right. kind of and way. And then you wonder that there's this one point where the uh, detective is supposed to find a ledger, and he's saying a ledger, a ledger. You know, you know it's the parties, and you see it there, and you're just wondering, should we tell him? Yes, uh, people did call out. Well, I think, I think someone was planted yeah. to. Call, oh, so, oh, you're saying? Oh. Well, you, the question is, you're thinking, do we call him out and tell him, uh -huh. or? Do we just let him sweat it out? Right. You know, ultimately, yeah. if, the, if no one in the audience does, they have someone in the back who does. But the bottom line is, I rarely it's side seen... Splitting. This is when you yes. say side-splitting, gut-busting, this is what they mean. Yes. And there's one thing that's, a, that's a, an homage to uh, Buster Keaton, mm -hmm. where the thing oh, falls yes. down on top. Yes. You know, the, the person is standing and the house falls down on With, and the window. And again, now Buster Keaton homage. did it. It was a real wall. Oh, yes. They yes. have a real wall. Yes. And then yes. there is one set where... The set, you know, the set said, breaks. Yeah, the one, yes, yeah, I said that. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Anyway, we're giving, it, it, it. It's running, and you should enjoy it. And I think you'll have a. It is a must fantastic see. Time. It is so five playbills. Oh, you give it five. Absolutely. Okay, I, I I don't have any problem with that. I'll give it five. Okay. Infinite I'm oversight. up with Latin history for morons. With one of our <laughs> favorite, favorite, favorite ever people. Okay, there he is, mm -hmm. John Leguizamo. Mm -hmm. Um, this is not quite as intriguing or even as much fun as some of his other plays on Broadway. His, he had three or four shows and they were, mm -hmm. because he played multiple characters in those shows. Mm -hmm. And here he's just John. And he comes out and he's a professor, as a professor, and he, saw, he comes out to teach us something. And he's on a stage that's a, that's a classroom. And there's a blackboard and there are books all over the stage in cartons and every one of them is a book about some Latin hero that we don't know from some century, from some part of South or Latin America. So it's a, it's a number of books, but they're not in the history book. And he wants us to, to see, he wants to see that his children will learn well, the stories of their background. That is the premise yes. of the play. Yes. He is trying to teach his children. He is trying to help his children with Latin history. He's also trying to find a Latino who he can show up as a strong role model right. For his son, right. this is basically a domesticated, happily living middle class John Leguizano. <laughs> well, that too, but here that and that's the problem. Uh -huh. His plays have always worked because he had his quirky family and his quirky neighborhood and his quirky right. friends. You're right. Here it's just a history lesson, and I ended up doing what I did very often in my college classes, which was namely dozing off. To the to this, well, you know, I like John Leguizamo. I've enjoyed I, his, that's what I but said, yeah. again, as a straight history lesson, even though he, look, he's still John Leguizamo, he's still a talent. Well, but it doesn't have what makes him. It reminded me of the know, who was the comedian, the Irish comedian who did two histories of the world, and and Seinfeld directed him. Do you remember who I'm talking about? I do, but it's... I can't, it's, I can't get his name. He was we'll, on we'll, Saturday Night Live. Yeah, the little guy who comes around to super... We'll, we'll super the name under who, who that comedian Probably was. not. This time. That we'll comedian see. did the same kind of shows, mm -hmm. but he had cartoons and backdrops and photos and things that made this... This was just John Leguizamo, the books, and a, and a blackboard. Giving, giving a history lesson. Giving a history lesson. Well, with, with, with comic comic side Occasionally. Notes, but... Not enough people know the people he's talking about. I mean, yes, the Aztecs. We know about the Aztecs. And he's saying, but you know this about the Aztecs. And it's kind of like, okay, I didn't know that about the Aztecs. But now I know it. Thank you. Let's move on. He doesn't bring up Che. There's a book about Che on the, on the, on the, on the, on the stage. I would call Che a role model. And he does, he does bring him up briefly. Are, are your conclusion. Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, I didn't doze. I stayed awake. Good I wanted you. more.
I wanted something else. I wanted more Leguizamo. Mm. Um, so I would give it two. Yeah. Well, this is Sweat, which we saw off Broadway last year. Mm -hmm. It has been moved to Broadway. I cannot think of a show that I am happier to see moved on Broadway. It this won is, the Pulitzer Prize, mm -hmm. you know. So uh, Lynn Nottage yes. directed, uh, excuse uh, me, wrote, wrote it. Kate uh, Worski. Uh, Worski directed it. Mm -hmm. I liked it off Broadway. I love it on Broadway. The only thing that changed for me was that I did find the beginning confusing, mm -hmm. which basically starts time. with yeah. two men meeting with a parole officer. Well, it jumps back and, and forth yes, in time. Yes, it, it, time, it time travels, and but once you get to it, mm -hmm. and you will find it a little confusing too, I think, if you haven't seen it, uh -huh. but basically it travels back and we find out what happened to these men, how they got where they are. Mm -hmm. It is a factory town. And one is white and one is black, which is very important. Right, right. It is a factory town. It's Reading, Pennsylvania, which, which elected uh, President Trump. Okay, <laughs> it's a factory town. <laughs> <gasps> takes place between 2000 and 2008 when Trump was not in office. No, I know, I know. And it, it basically the factory, it, the lives of the workers there while the factory is closing. And these workers are being put out of a job and the union cannot protect them. And you have one character um, who's promoted. And she's... Um, played by Ms. Michelle Wilson. She's black, and she's suddenly been promoted to management, much to the dismay of Jonah Day, who plays her best friend. They've been friends for years. Forever. And their kids are friends, and they're the two right. people at the beginning of the show. And, and right, and, and, and Day's character is basically a multi-generation worker in the factory. So suddenly they find themselves on the same side, but unable to resolve the differences. Basically, the workers are being laid off and this is, well, your management now, why aren't you standing up for us? And she's saying, I am, but there's only so much I can do. Uh, another character, a young Latino man who's a bar, basically right. a bartender, assistant Played bartender. Played by the lovely Carlo Alban, who might have Right, who would, you know, would love the opportunity to work right. in the factory. And indeed, he ends up being a scab when they go out on strike because right. even if they're not giving him the same deal, it's still better than he right. had. And the whole situation blows up, leading to what we see 10 years right. later. And it is just a well-balanced, well done. You know, I, I took a friend of mine who's, who's probably feels the way you do about Trump, and she said, well, these are, I like that they're stereotypes, and I disagree. They are types, certainly. You well, have there's an arc, the, the there white, archetypes the as white opposed blue, to stereotypes. Right, but they're not stereotypes. I said they're archetypes yes. as opposed to stereotypes. Yes, exa exactly. Yeah. And, exactly. And the other interesting and thing is, it's, I can't, I have to say this thing, though, mm -hmm. about Trump. These are the people who now elected Trump. These are the disaffiliated, okay. white you know what? and black. Leslie, I'm not going to get into okay. Trump with All you right. tonight. Okay. All right. Fair I'm going enough. to talk about Fair this enough. play, Fair enough. and I'm going to tell you how much I liked it. Fair enough. Because it's each character, you have characters on different sides of the equation, mm -hmm. but the brilliance of it is we understand all of them. Okay. You know, no one is right or wrong. The villain here is perhaps the... Uh, the factory. The factory, yeah. It's the factory. unseen. Right. And we never we never see these people. It's the fat cats uh, in the factory. Essentially. Yeah. And, uh, and what they're Rashid doing Edwards, is they're taking uh, their machinery and they're shipping it overseas. Right. For workers who will, pay, who will work for nothing. Right. You know, who are happy to get food. Right. You know. And you have uh, laid uh, Cody Williams and uh, Will uh, Pullen. And Chris Davis. The, uh, Christopher Davis, whom we saw in that wonderful fight, uh, mm -hmm. Something Royale, remember that? Uh, the, the Royal, yes, the Royal, yeah, the yes, Royale, Ex right. excellent. He's an excellent, excellent actor, and he plays the young um, black son who wants to go James to James Colby, again, mo most of these characters are uh, with, I think, one or holdovers from the off-Broadway. It's that the was, entire off-Broadway No, no, yes. one, the um, oh, woman who plays for, the... Oh, except for, yes, no, no, except for the woman from uh, from Younger, yes. Right, who, right, right, who... Uh, Who's in the, in the original... Alison uh, Wright takes over, I think, took over right, that role. Right, you're right. And but again, does a good does a good basically as a, as a dr the drunken third friend. Right. So what all would you in have? all, I would give this I think four and a half. I really liked it, maybe even five on a good night. I give it four point seven five. Okay, as, I, I'll, I'll again, split the difference with you. You know, certainly just a, a recommended well. Be I'm beautiful so happy. Characters. I just hope that people will continue to pay big money, mm -hmm. large bills 
to go see a basically a play about poor people. You know, I don't know if that works in some. Well, a, there there is also always the TKTS booth. Yes, so but I don't know how the, if the play can manage on that or not. But mm -hmm. anyway, I'm happy. I'm very happy that it's there. Yes. It's a Studio 54. It's, it's put on by the Roundabout. Right. So you know, I'm very happy. It was originally about that. at the public. So yes. two good yes. organizations yes. have. Uh, I get to talk about war paint. And I can think of no one better qualified to do so. <laughs> war paint is the story of the two prima diva beauticians in, in America during the 20s and 30s, when there were only two real uh, companies. These were, these were for rich people, and they made... Uh, and it's Helena Rubinstein, played by Patti LuPone, mm -hmm. and it's... Elizabeth Arden, played by Christine Ebersole. And I just wanted to say that we, you know, we're looking at this. I brought this from Bloomingdale's. This is, there are 4,000 different kinds of, of co cosmetics today. It, it's, you know, like 90 pages of nothing but cosmetic, cosmetic, cosmetic. Hard to believe that once upon a time there were only two and, 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 and nothing to choose from and poor people couldn't afford them. And they were, and they were both fake and they never met. And the truth is they never met. And there's a book that this is based on called War Paint. And they, they, they exchanged husbands at one time. Or they exchanged not husbands. Well, Elizabeth Arden's husband went to work for Rubenstein. And Rubenstein's gay s s chief of staff went to work for Elizabeth Arden. Right. And they stole secrets from each other. Right. And they, went to, they both went to court because they, 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 were, they were found out to be frauds. And I mean, the story, the things are so amazing. And the costumes, and it goes from the 30s, then it goes through the war, then it brings it up to the 50s. Mm -hmm. And then it goes into the 60s, and they became passe. Well, they, they basically, they did not keep up with the times. This often happens. Well, and the times and, and, were... And competitors. Uh, in the, they, they, they show uh, Charles Revson, Charles Revson who founded Revlon. Revlon. Man, Revlon and kills see, them both. And, well, but you see them, you know, they're both offered. William Paley, who, another pioneer, right. he becomes... Would you like to sponsor a TV show? No. no. Would you like? And then you see Revson Rev Rev doing Rev it, right. mass media, bringing it to the masses, and they don't want to cheapen their products. The beautiful model actress Dorian Lee is his a, a creation, and she's seen there. Susie Parker right. was her sister. And that, to me, was the more interesting. That was mm -hmm. the second act, uh -huh. where you also see them helping during the war, the, the war effort. Well, helping um, by giving cosmetics to the people on the front. I mean. Very right. interesting, you know, it, it, yeah. the, the well, mindset well, was a little bit well, bizarre. Well, you know, it, you it, it, um, so, uh, and basically, um, you know, the, both of these women were, I guess you could say frauds in many ways. They were humble beginnings. Yes. And they both elevated themselves. You see uh, a very cute scene where uh, Rubenstein cannot get an apartment in an upscale yes. building. And we wonder why. Yes. And yeah, because she's Jewish. It's, it's a restricted building. And she bought, so she ends up buying the building. Buying the building. And gets, right. and gets her apartment. And it's and not a joke. That used to be a joke. And that's not a joke. That's a real no, no, thing. That, that and uh, so Christina Epistol is more the uh, white royalty, but her, her beginnings were she's no. She's from Canada. She's right, Canadian. She was from Canada. And she they, was they were a both farm poor. Girl. They were yeah. both poor, immigr Absolutely. poor immigrants who elevated Absolutely. themselves. And the first act basically has them going against each other. Uh, well, Doug starting their getting their comp their companies are already started and right. going and John Dosett and Douglas Sills Dossett, yeah. uh, plays nice to have Douglas Sills back by yes, the way play, play the yes, men in is. their the men in their lives Scarlet who are literally Pimpernel, exchanged yeah. it starts when Rubenstein decides to to te to buy her company back she had sold it she's right. back in the business but I found the second act where with World War II where outside forces where the competition much more. Interesting. I gotta say, I disagree. Mm -hmm. And here's the reason. Okay. The first act was of a piece. It was the one time period. Mm -hmm. So every, the costumes were, you know, mm -hmm. and they're gorgeous. I mean, evocative. Right. And the things that, that, that Helena Rubinstein wore, my God, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but that was of a piece. Then suddenly we go, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s. Right. It's a little they, too fast, they a do, little they, too much. May, and may, they did may it, be. They did it well. Oh. The costumes are right. Yep. It's just The costumes too much. are right. The women are right. But here's the thing. You have two powerhouses, yes. two of the Broadway's yes. greatest, Patti LuPone and Christine Ebersole. Yes. Both give both Tony winners. Good, good performances. <laughs> both major Broadway veterans. But, you know, like Christine you said last week Gardens. about Emile, uh, they should have. I should have been Emily, blown over, Emily, and I yeah. was not. 
I was blown with, um, over. It's difficult because it's always split screen. You know, it's always it's, two it, sides it, it of the stage. It seems that Lacone, and it's certainly in the first act, her accent seemed to get in the way, way oh, of her really? singing. Oh, you thought so? I thought so. No. No. That, I, that I, was I mean, my did impression. That, uh, okay, I understand. I understand you're saying that. Uh, I felt that she, this was a part she could really sink her teeth and do it. Since, since, since Sweeney Todd, it I don't think she's been. had a role like, you know, where she could do that much. Right. It, sh it should have been. I, I thought she did. I thought she did. And again, job. two good performances, but I, I wanted the vocally, sky to light vocally, up. Vocally, I... Christine Ebersol has a voice that runs the gamut from, mm -hmm. you know, from a, a, an alto yes. right into a soprano. Yes. L Lapone is, is more vocally limited, but she's so great in the role. And she's always been limited by that. I mean, it's it's always been you know a, a good solid belting voice. Yeah. Um, Look, it got her through Evita and oh, anything please. goes. I, I, and I'm not a whole I'm, bunch of other I'm things. I'm so envious. I'm not. Mm -hmm. None of this is like right. you know, to, to to say anything about it. But yeah. no, I really when when you put it all together, I thought about it so much afterwards. I went with a friend. Mm -hmm. You know, we're of an age. We both we both talk cosmetics all the time. So, yeah. so as you said, you know. So we really loved it. And 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 the more I thought about it, the more I loved it. And I thought it's one of the only two shows, for me. Mm -hmm. And they're both uh, based. They're both adapted from. Mm -hmm. But they are the best things that I've seen. And I'm not including okay. Hello Dolly, okay. even though that's a revival. But the two shows that are new. And what whatnot. was the other one? Uh, uh, Anastasia, which you haven't seen yet, so when you see it, we'll... well but Anastasia and Warpaint are my two favorites really? of the season. I was not overly enamored with okay. Warpaint. Maybe if I were more into cosmetics. Well, yeah, you know, there may not be a show for guys. It may be that simple. Maybe. It, it, could, it could It's be. like, all right, when are they going to stop talking about you know, <laughs> lipstick, right? I mean, I can see you're saying that. Well, you know... Well, so was, what would you give it? Uh, I would give it three, three and a half, oh, maybe. Oh, yeah. 4.5. Really? 4.5. Okay, I would no, give it five, I... but I have... Can't, can't, come, can't come anywhere near that. Okay. Last, uh, our last show, I was talking about the Feel Good musical. Right. In Transit, Amelie. Right. And the king of them all this <laughs> season, Come From Away. This is, believe it or not, a 9-11 story. Yeah, 9-11 musical. That's but kind the... of the silver lining of the 9-11. Uh, planes were dispatched, could not land in America. So this small Canadian town, which has large runways, because it used to be where planes stopped it's over. It's Gander. It's Newfoundland. It's right. Gander, Newfoundland. But planes don't do that anymore. Right. But all of a sudden, they're doing it again. Right. And this town has to absorb hundreds of people. Thousands. And thousands. No, and well, no, it wasn't thousands. Hundreds. And they do it, I think it was with people, yeah. gusto. And, you know, there is... Gusto one, and charm. One, and... one nod because there is one uh, passenger who is of Arab origin and he's a good guy, but... He's a he, chef. He's treated with suspicion, but, but even he's brought into the fold mm -hmm. eventually. This is um, book, music, and lyrics by Irene Sankoff and David Hine. And, you know, I took this with... I went to see this with my daughter. And the one thing we agreed on that with the exception of one number sung by one of the pilots, a woman pilot who, yeah. tells, about, who tells her story, and it's fabulous, and I think she was nominated yeah. uh, for it. The music is so, for lack of a better term, integrated that... Oh, that's, that was Jen Kalella. Yeah. Yeah, and, and, but with the exception of that number, oh. I didn't notice the music. I didn't... I, and I had to think, oh, wait, I'm in a musical. Well, because a lot of it is what they call recitative. It's the storytelling is done in music. Well, that's and, what a good musical does. No, but, but they're not songs, per se. They're, they're, they're storytelling in music. It's not the same thing. It's what they do in opera a lot. You know, okay. it's that kind of... And, well, that, and, that, that's what my theater professor said was the difference between opera and musical theater. Well, there you are. And, 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 and also, I, I, I have an issue with uh, Chris, Chris, Christopher Ashley, who's a wonderful uh, choreographer. Mm -hmm. But in this particular... Um, no, wait, does it say direction or choreography? I can't... I can't... I don't have my... I have my glasses on my head, as usual. Uh, he, he directed... Uh, they don't even call it chore... It's musical, musical staging, staging. Well, by I'm Kelly Devine. Well, I'm surprised he allowed this to happen because what it is, it's Stephen Hoggett kind of choreography. It's stamping your feet and stamping your feet and stamping your feet <laughs> all the way through. I got very tired of the noise of stamping feet after a while. I understand why these are, you know, these are plain Canadians and all of that. And then I had a real... I'm sorry. I would try to go with it. I would, I would understand it's a beautiful idea of all of that. And then suddenly somebody would talk about, we saw the towers fall. 
my, my son's a, a firefighter. And it all came rushing back, and I started, I was just very, and I'm emotional now just talking about it. I can't really take to heart a musical about when I walked down 7th Avenue and there was nothing but smoke. I can't. Mm -hmm. So I did my best. I, I, I watched it with an open mind, I hope. Um, but when it wasn't stamping and when it got to talking about what was going on, I mean, it was fine. Jen Colella's character, I actually saw her talking on a show with the real, with the real pilot. Right. It's a lovely idea. Um, mm -hmm. And she was the first woman pilot, and it was all very wonderful, and, you know, blah, blah. Okay. Right. Um, it's too, if this had been written maybe, by maybe. anybody but Canadians, it would not be put on. That's, it, it, you can't. It's too soon. It's too soon to do a musical. No, do you want to go see it? Do you want to go see a musical about the Holocaust? It uh, that, would have, to be, it would second, have to be it? done very well. Okay, okay. And but not... if I saw maybe a musical about Schindler's List or one about... You are joking when you say that. Or, 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 <laughs> one, or what about... All right. You are giving me the worst we are, case we are scenario, about to, right? right we're, about to, we're about to lose our time slot, okay. so we've got to wrap, wrap this up. Okay. But the bottom line is... It can be done right. Look, they said when Evita came out, they said, why not Hitler? So you're concluding. Well, I didn't see Evita people, the first time around for that reason. I didn't want to see. And people, see. you know, again, I was in the city for 9-11 also, and I could still enjoy this musical. And I would give it three and a half playbills. But again, I caution, this is not yeah. so much, this is not a typical musical. You may not even notice, except when the pilot is doing her number, that this is a musical. Well, I... And, and I did feel good. I, it's a mixed cast. It's part mm -hmm. Canadian. It's part yeah. American. Um, I, I give them credit for trying to do something very, very difficult. I think what happened was beautiful. The idea of people opening right. their hearts and their homes to mm -hmm. these strangers was a lovely, lovely thing. If they could have kept it to that and not referred back to things that were actually happening somehow, I might have felt better about it. Mm -hmm. As it is, I would give it... Yeah, A for effort again. I would give it a three, and mm. I'm sorry, guys. That's I I couldn't do I could I couldn't do any more than that. Well, the, uh, it's interesting because with all your issues, we're still yeah, very, well, we're still pretty close. They did in, a good uh, job with what they did. I yeah. just am very turned off by what. Okay, what the, what the I I, I was in. not, and I was as close to it. There as, was a as Holocaust you. musical, by the way, that thing called Portraits, I think, where the, they had the picture frames, and they kept saying it's not a Holocaust musical, but it was. <laughs> When you go to the theater, look for Leslie and me, us too. On the aisle.